This is Frank Taylor with Nature in Your Backyard. Today, I'm going to teach you about five things everybody should know about the black rat snake. First of all, the black rat snake comes with a lot of names. Some call it a black snake. Some call it the eastern rat snake. Some call it the black rat snake. And it has lots of different names, which is why we try to quantify all this stuff with a scientific name. So when we say a scientific name, there's no mistake about what organism you're talking about. But the scientific name too, I always say, hey, what's in a name? The scientific name of the black snake is really cool. It's Pantherophus alleghaniensis. Pantherophus alleghaniensis. The first word comes from the Greek word for panther is, well, panther. Ophis means snake. So the scientific name means panther snake. And you think about it, black panther snake. Wow, what a cool name to describe this predator, right? It was sleek and shiny and black and just a really cool snake to see. The last part of its name, Alleghaniensis, comes from the fact that back in the 1800s when biologists were naming things and trying to figure out what different species were, the scientist who came up on some black snakes was on one of the Allegheny Mountain ridges in the Appalachian Mountains. And so he tagged on the species name Alleghensis. So the scientific name is Pantherophus Alleghaniensis, and it means black panther snake from the Allegheny Mountains. So let's go watch my trailer and we'll come back. I'll have a black snake in my hand. Let's do this. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And here's the make this invasive. There's a dog. Dogwoods are flower. And I just took a couple swipes terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's so here's my black snake. And the First thing that I want you to know about black snakes, and I want everybody to know, is black snakes are not always black. And if you look very closely at this snake, you can see that in addition to being black, it has some white speckling on it. And this is from the juvenile stage. And this is the thing that I want you to really know. When I say that black snakes are not always all black, the juveniles are not black. And I've had so many people kill or, or send me photos or bring me a, a dead snake in a bucket decapitated by a shovel that's about 12 inches long. And they say, hey, Mr. Taylor, I killed a copperhead. Do you want to see it? And I said, yes, I, I do want to see it. But my first impulse is you did not kill a copperhead. And almost every single time in my 40 years of teaching, no one has brought me a dead copperhead. It's always been a dead black snake or a dead corn snake. And it's mistaken for a copperhead for a couple different reasons. And one of the reasons is that for it to be a black snake, people assume that the juveniles will be black. And in fact, the juveniles are not. And I don't have a juvenile with me, this is a snake that I just picked up. You, this is a snake that you are likely to find in your own backyard, and just like I did. On another time, I'll do a video of the juvenile black snake. And the juvenile black snakes, rather than being all black, have blotches on them on a gray background. The block, blotches can be black or brownish, so they're often mistaken. So the number one thing I want you to know about black snakes is number one, they're not always black. And that juvenile collar can extend into late adulthood. And you can see all these markings here and it's still fading away. And if you look at the Virginia Herpetological website, you'll see that they talk about black snakes keeping their juvenile coloration well into adulthood and particularly they mentioned Pulaski County which I find very interesting. So number one black snakes are not always all black especially in the juvenile stage. The second thing I want everybody to know 
is that black snakes will imitate rattlesnakes and copperheads. All right, so here's another reason why we get a lot of mistaken identity. And you can see that his head is kind of oblong shape, but one of the things that black snakes will do is they will mimic poisonous snakes. It's called Batesian mimicry, when a harmless organism imitates organism that is harmful. For example, viceroy butterflies do Batesian mimicry. Viceroy butterflies look just like monarch butterflies. Monarch butterflies are black and orange to advertise their toxicity. They eat milkweed, which has cardiac glycosides in it that makes monarch butterflies very toxic. And there's a classic video on a, a blue jay eating a monarch butterfly and then throwing up shortly after it's eaten it. Viceroy butterflies, on the other hand, are black and orange, but they don't eat milkweed. And they're perfectly palatable and perfectly edible. The viceroy butterflies benefit from this form of mimicry. So what does a snake do to look like a copperhead? Well, I already told you as a juvenile, it has that blotching pattern, which people mistake for a copperhead. Copperhead's pattern is an hourglass, has hourglass patches that extend all the way around the body. But that's a lot of complexity to, to look at in a second of looking at a snake. But what these guys do when they're agitated, and this one is not agitated, they can flatten their head out and make it look like it's triangular shape. I mean, really, really distinctly triangular shape. When I talk about snakes, I always refer to the Virginia Herpetological website. It's a fantastic resource for reptiles and amphibians in the state of Virginia. You should check it out. And they got some great pictures of a black snake that was agitated that flattened his head out. So here's a, a snake in a mimic position of a poisonous snake. A poisonous snake will uh, reach back like that to be in a position to strike. And with that, he, he can be much better at striking. Also notice how triangular shaped his head is. Do you see how he's changed the shape of his head into a triangle? That's another thing they'll do, another form of mimicry, to imitate a poisonous snake. So the other thing these guys will do, and this guy did it. Now, i got to remind you, this is a wild snake. This snake, now he's really being wild, because I think because he didn't feel supported. This snake so almost certainly has never had human contact in his life. And a couple days ago, I found him carefully picked him up, and now I can handle him. And so, you know, people are so terrified of snakes, you know, they're, they're really not so ho horrible. So what this snake did, though, when I had him in my container and I opened the lid the next day to check him out and put some water in for him, he started making his head triangular and vibrating his tail. And that is, an, again, Batesian mimicry. He's trying to imitate a dangerous rattlesnake that has venom in its fangs. This guy has, has no venom. He's, he can bite you. He's bony palate. Could it possibly even draw blood for one of, from one of the, as one of the bigger snakes might do. But this guy is, is really harmless. And you can see he's really relatively docile. But when I had him cornered, his defensive posture was to curl up his neck, which gives him better striking range like that, vibrate his tail, and make his head triangular shape. And he did a great job. So you can be out in the woods and corner a black snake. They probably won't do it if you're just walking by. But if you disturb that black snake, he'll probably start vibrating his tail in the leaves and it will sound just like a rattle. What should everybody know about black snakes? Black snakes are climbers. And if you look at the Virginia Herpetological website, 
they describe the black snake as being terrestrial and arboreal. Terrestrial meaning living on the ground. Arboreal means living in trees. And so I always tease my friends that are a little snake shy. These people go out in the woods and they're always, you know, looking on the ground, looking, you know, make sure there's not a snake near them. Well, I tell them, hey, you can't just look at the ground. You need to start looking up in the trees. And I've had numerous instances of seeing black snakes in trees. Many people have experiences with black snakes climbing a tree or bush near their house to get at bird eggs or young birds. They've seen black snakes climb the walls of their house to, to get at a nest. I had a black snake that was probably five feet long. Apparently, he was in a tree branch right about seven, eight feet off the creek where my 25 kids in my biology class we're collecting aquatic insects as part of a field study. And somebody said, Mr. Taylor, look up. And there was this black snake perched in a branch. Just on a recent hike to in Patrick County, I saw a black snake that was at least 14 feet up in a tree. I'm just happy to be there. So black snakes, what I want you to know about black snakes, what everybody should know, black snakes are great climbers. And I might do a little climbing demonstration. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate how black snakes can climb and what great climbers they are. So here's a vertical tree, and here's my black snake. And you can see that, look, mom, no hands. It's amazing how they can climb a 100% vertical surface with ease. You know, almost like he's glued on there. And one of the reasons they're good climbers is they can essentially see how different the scales are uh, underneath the snake compared to the scales on the top. And they can pretty much control each one of these scales individually. I had a black snake in my classroom when I was a, a high school biology teacher. And I would put him up against a wall and he could just climb that vertical brick wall inside of our classroom, just clinging onto it with the scales and every nook and cranny. So black snakes are really, really great climbers. I just placed them on the tree and using those scales, those belly scales, he can attach to every little crevice he can find. And they're just amazing climbers. They're arboreal. The fourth thing everybody should know about black snakes is that black snakes eat rodents, birds, and bird eggs. And it's really great that they eat rodents. It's a misconception. There, I've heard some people say, oh, if you have black snakes in your barn, you won't have copperheads because black snakes hate copperheads and they'll eat them. Well, that's not true. Black snakes are not big snake eaters, but there might be some exceptions to the rule. Mostly they want to eat rodents, birds, and bird eggs. They don't eat copperheads. King snakes do eat other snakes. So a king snake might could possibly do that. But the black snakes, if you have it in a barn, well, I always say that's a great thing. You know, they don't eat the copperheads. But if a black snake is in your barn, that means there's food in your barn. And the food are probably rodents. And it's great to reduce that rodent population. If you have a black snake in your barn, you're probably less likely, just based on biological theory, not to have a copperhead because black snakes will outcompete the copperhead and occupy that niche. If you kill that black snake in your barn, well, you just opened up that niche for other species. But in general, copperheads don't like going into houses. Black snakes <laughs> might occasionally do that, but you really don't have to, to worry about them. The other thing that's great about black snakes and rodents is I've had rodents in my sheds out here on my 18 acres in Lloyd, and mice just poop and pee everywhere. A lot of animals won't, you know, pee in their home, but mice and rats will pee and poop everywhere. And in my sheds, you know, I'd wished I'd, I'd had a black snake resident so that I wouldn't have all that uh, pee and poop. And mice are vectors of several diseases like hantavirus that um, people that hike on the Appalachian Trail sometimes get because of the high population of mice in shelters where they're taking advantage of spilt food that they might be able to find. 
And the fifth thing, number five, what I want everybody to know about black snakes is this is the most likely snake you're going to encounter in the state of Virginia. The Virginia Herpetological Society has some data uh, on that. This is the most likely snake you're going to find. The black snake, most commonly encountered snake in the state of Virginia, is most active in the late in the day, in the evening, and will often travel long distances. And they're really pretty, pretty nocturnal. And so uh, you often see black snakes killed on roads because they are traveling long distances, they're traveling at night. There's probably some evidence that they'll go out on the pavement as well to warm their body temperature up. Snakes are cold-blooded, right? So, oh, cold-blooded reptiles. But they don't really want to have cold blood. What it really means is cold-blooded organisms regulate their body temperature by envir environmental means. They can't generate heat internally like we can, and we keep our body temperature around 98.7 degrees. These snakes like to be probably around uh, 75 to 80 degrees at most time. So going out at not on a cool night out on the pavement probably aids them in their temperature regulation so they can go out and hunt at night. As I'm looking at my own video, you can see that the underneath side of the snake has a kind of a checkerboard pattern, another uh, thing to use to identify it. Most common snake you're going to find in Virginia and a great snake to have. Thank you for watching this episode of Nature in Your Backyard. Five things everyone should know about black rat snakes. And the black rat snake, scientific name, Pantherophis alleghaniensis. Pantherophis, the black panther snake. What a great name for a snake that can actually reach 101 inches long. That's over eight feet long, according to the Virginia Herpetological website. Check out their website if you haven't done it yet. It's a great website provides great education about all the amphibians and reptiles you'll find in Virginia and they have some great sections on juvenile snakes and how to identify venomous snakes and how to know which is venomous and which is not. Really great website. Hope you enjoyed this uh, feature today. We'll see you again soon.